Blog Talk Radio. Good evening, everybody, and thank you for joining us here tonight for King Jordan Radio. The date is Thursday, November 19th, 2015. Tonight on the show, we're going to be discussing Charlie Sheen, who tested HIV positive and made sure it was positive, as he told Matt Lauer on the Today Show. We'll talk about the teen rape trial. Uh, Two years ago, a teen raped and killed his teacher. We'll touch on that subject. We'll also touch on the Facebook photo slave murder trial, uh, along with Jerry Sandusky. Uh, We'll get the legal view of why he did, in fact, get uh, his pension back. Ladies and gentlemen, next week there will be no show due to the Thanksgiving holiday. I want to give a shout-out to Madeline, Pager, and Debbie for sending me those beautiful uh, stuff that you did send me, so God bless for that. Tonight, we're joined with a world-renowned defense attorney. She is based out of Seattle. She's joining us from Seattle. She has represented the police in Seattle. She is a uh, top 100 lawyer. And uh, she also worked with the Amanda Knox trial. Ladies and gentlemen, veteran and famed attorney, making her return the one, the only. Let's welcome in Ann Bremner. Good evening, Ann. How are you? I'm great. How are you? And thanks for the wonderful intro and happy belated birthday. Oh, thanks so much. Thanks so much. And, uh, I tell you, it's uh, it's been a sad couple of days with the uh, tragedy that went down on a oh, yeah. Friday night. And uh, first of all, let me hear your comments about that. Well, it, I kept thinking to myself, you know, after 9-11, we said w- we will never forget. And we also said never again. And this has been referred to, you know, as their own 9-11 in France. Um, the last time I was in Paris, I was 17. I was an exchange student. I mean, what a beautiful, wonderful city and beautiful, wonderful people. And it's just unthinkable what happened, you know, to, to go into restaurants, you know, to go into a concert hall and just to slay innocence for true hatred. And it's really just that there's no words. I, I think we're all just completely shell-shocked by all of it. And we keep seeing all these images about what happened 
And then I think the fear is now, of course, worldwide. We've seen ISIS, of course, doing terrible things, but at least for me out here on the West Coast, with our governors saying that we'll still accept, you know, Syrian refugees, as I understand it, at least one of these perpetrators, you know, came in supposedly or purportedly as a, as a Syrian refugee. But I'm just saying that, that it's it's just palpable, I think, the fear that we have all around the world, especially after a jet went down, too, and they showed the bomb. It was basically, was it a pineapple juice can that they got on right. board? I mean, it's just astonishing. And they found the guy, right? Yeah, and I, I just... To, to see all these things happening around us, such pure evil, and, and hoping that we can stop it, and, and but in many ways thinking that maybe we can't, you know, not to the extent that we thought we could before. But uh, as Madonna pointed out at her overseas concert, she said that in essence that she didn't want to do it, but then she said she thought, thought about it, and she said that's what they want from us, to that's take right. away our freedom, our uh, 9-11. So I guess the best thing to do is to carry on, even though it's hurtful, and uh, that's the only way to get these people back. That's exactly right, and I, I heard it explained this way today, which I thought was very succinct and, and apt, and that is, you know, terrorists aim for terror, and so if we're terrorized, then they've succeeded, and and then they can push their agenda by virtue of the terrorism and the effect on us. So what you've just said, I think, is exactly the same thing and very well put. No question. Uh, the Facebook trial has came to life. Let's take some sound for this one, and I want okay. to get your take on the other side. Okay. The trial is now underway for a man accused of shooting and killing his wife and then posting a picture of her body on Facebook. Derek Medina's lawyers say his actions were in self-defense. Phil Keating's live outside the court in Miami with the very latest. Phil? Jenna, in an instant, Derek Medina went from social media showboat to instant a world nine, worldwide deranged villain when he posted that photo of his dead wife on Facebook. Well, two years later today, he is in the courtroom, the 31-year-old facing life in prison if convicted of, by this jury of first-degree murder. He is claiming a unique battered spouse syndrome defense, claiming his abusive wife was punching him over and over and over. Medina's noticeably cleaned up his look for day one of his murder trial, getting rid of his super long hair and burly beard that he'd grown in jail. Now, the day Medina notoriously became the first person believed to have ever used social media to post a picture of his dead victim on the Internet, he also wrote this, quote, I'm going to prison or death sentence for killing my wife. Love you guys. Miss you guys. Take care. Facebook people, you'll see me in the news. Prosecutors contend Jennifer Alfonso wanted to leave Medina and his controlling relationship and told him so that morning. Also pointing out that Medina left their kitchen argument, went upstairs, grabbed his gun, returned downstairs to shoot and kill her. That Mr. Medina disclosed beating and hitting his wife. This is a summary, Judge. Um, I would it's, a proper. Happy to, it's a proper, right? This is just a summary of his letter. The defense team's first motion for mistrial denied by the judge this morning because of uh, jailhouse narc, they said, a jailhouse snitch, uh, apparently implicating Medina's previous plans for premeditated murder. The prosecutor here began her opening statement for the jury saying 25 and 0, 25 and 0. That was the defendant's amateur boxing record in the ring, alluding to the fact that there should be great doubt that Medina could lose a physical altercation with his five foot seven wife. Testimony takes place this afternoon. Back to you, Jenna. A case will continue to watch, Phil. Thank you. And Bremner, just the uh, tough trial, and uh, they say what's bad about Facebook. That is one bad thing yeah. because this idiot gets the. Uh, you know, in his in his mind, at least, he thinks he's some kind of superstar to be posting his dead wife or, or talking about it or whatever he's doing. Uh, well, what's your thoughts on this? I, I can't imagine that he's going to prevail in this defense. And th I saw the picture at some point that he posted on Facebook. It was somewhere, I think, in the Daily Mail. Maybe it was the New York right. Daily News. I, I don't know, but it, I saw it. And she didn't look too menacing there. And... You know, there was no evidence really that he posted that would indicate that he was a victim of battered person syndrome, which we now call it used to be battered woman syndrome. And, and he, I mean, he could take her on, you know, et cetera. He seemed to be kind of bragging about it, frankly. It's like 
it's almost like the, the the guy that and I've just forgotten his name that went on TV and, and killed a reporter and a cameraman. You know, yeah. It's like look at look yes. at and then he post. Remember he posted all that King on Twitter from and uh, the news outlet. Yes, exactly. And and so I, that's when I first read about this Facebook murder trial. That's the way I looked at it. I thought the post was very similar, and and then of course putting the picture. I mean, it's just horrific. But is he really thinking he put it on there to help his defense that he was somehow acting in self defense? i.e., how does that picture prove that? It doesn't. There's not one thing in that picture that shows that he's been battered, that he acted in self-defense, or that he acted reasonably. Zero. No, this is definitely a hard case to defend for any lawyer, and uh, yeah. it sounds so premeditated. It's not even uh, it's not even close. Right. But uh, I just wanted to also ask you in open court, if you will, uh, about uh, I spoke to Tom Mesero earlier today, now, he told me that you were at some kind of litigation um, thing where they would, and you mentioned the MJ trial. I did. And right, right, and he got he got uh, he got a fax of the whole thing, and he was uh, really uh, touched by uh, uh, how you paint them in a positive light. And then he also referred to uh, that you are uh, one of the top twenty lawyers in. In the world, uh, and that was to me. That yes. just about like made my entire year, my whole life. When I, you told me that, King, what an honor. <laughs> he's and he's you and know. If, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah, I was gonna say to to the listeners that are listening, uh, you've been around for a while. I mean, you 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 know that Tom Bezerro is not just another guy around the block. Yeah, he well, big, and big he. Lawyer. He was. Um, I, I, I attended the entire Michael Jackson trial. Um, I was m- mainly there for CNN. But what I said in my remarks is at the Litigation Council of America meeting in uh, Charleston, South Carolina, a very elite group of lawyers that I was addressing, and I said that case was the, what the most well-tried case I've ever seen. I, and I've covered a lot of trials. I have been around the block for a few years, so to speak. And I said Tom Mesereau is the best trial lawyer I've ever seen, and I think he's the best trial lawyer in history. He's brilliant. He's organized. He's amazing. As I used to say, and he you know, he's mesmerizing. And he got Robert Blake out yeah, Robert on Blake? bond, oh which gosh. is highly yeah. unlikely in, in that right. scenario. Yes. And what he really does, which people love, is he goes to the poorest neighborhoods in the in the world of Alabama, the deepest uh, parts that you wouldn't want to step foot in at, at any part of the day. And right. he takes on a case uh, uh, about three to four times a year, pro bono. I did, I did not know that. Awesome. Yes, that's absolutely 100 true. And he marches with uh, the Blacks uh, Lives Matter project. He's involved with a documentary right now. And uh, he really stands up for what he believes in. And, you know, for that, I give him a lot of credit. He's... He is just remarkable. I really think he's the best trial lawyer in history, and that he's even better than Clarence Darrow or Melvin Belli or a lot of the, you know, the the legendary <laughs> lawyers of history. I mean, he's really and and he's an amazing man, and he he has such grace, and he's so humble, and he's so brilliant. He's very humble, and in 2005, after he won that trial, him and Johnny Cochran got uh, lawyers of the year. So there was a special very well party deserved. for that. He, yeah. Yes, yes, indeed. But uh, let's continue with the news of the day. Of okay. course, yes, uh, Charlie Sheen back in the headlines. Now, uh, before I play the cut, uh, well, after I play the cut, I want to add something uh, in terms of him not telling his partners. But right. first, for the audience, let them get the background of what happened to good old Charles as he was on the uh, Today Show. Uh, a couple days ago. So. Now you're here to, to admit that I am, in fact, uh, HIV positive. This morning, Charlie uh, Sheen I, um, speaking out. I, 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 when were um, you diagnosed? Uh, roughly uh, four years ago. Once considered Hollywood's baddest bad boy, Sheen had a penchant for promiscuity and partying. What's not to love? When I mean, you see how I party, man, it was epic. The run I was on made Sinatra, Flynn, Jagger, Richards, all of them just look like... 
you know, droopy-eyed, armless children. Last month, the National Enquirer posted a story saying that an unnamed Hollywood superstar was HIV positive. At the time, it did not reveal Charlie Sheen's name, but now the tabloid is doing that and then some. With details from their year-and-a-half investigation and what they're calling a multi-million dollar cover-up that will rock Tinseltown. And now the National Enquirer's bombshell report that Sheen's been diagnosed as HIV positive. 